Well, I have a special guest here this morning, all the way from Port Hood, and uh, it's Tom McDonald. Most of you know Tom. But Tom has a little story to tell us today of what God has done in his life, that he's been his rescuer in every possible way. And so Tom is going to come and share with us a, a little word of testimony, and I, I trust the Lord will bless him in it. I know you'll be blessed by hearing him. There's one thing about coming here, uh, I always feel like you're among family, uh, family of God. Um, I didn't prepare anything exactly what I was going to say. I wanted to leave God the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me, to give me the words. And, uh, and so I just want to put my trust in Christ. And... Uh, Maybe we just go to prayer first. <clears throat> now, Father, we, we're so grateful that we can approach you, dear God. And we approach you, dear God, uh, simply because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, uh, what freedom his blood gives us, dear God. We will add nothing to his blood, dear God Almighty. Uh, Lord, we thank you that we can come as prodigal children, dear God, and uh, Lord, uh, know that you have placed us in Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, such liberty, dear God Almighty. Lord, uh, we want our lives to be a, a testimony, dear God, every day, not only by our words, dear God, but, but uh, how we live our lives, dear God Almighty. So Lord, uh, I just look to you, to, by your spirit, to give me the words to speak today, dear God Almighty, that... Uh, Lord, that uh, the promise uh, river of living water would flow even from my lips today, dear God. So we ask this in, in Christ's name. What a privilege it is to, to be able to, to go to Christ in prayer and, and know that he will strengthen us. A uh, good number of years ago, I'm now 79 years old, um, Next year, year from now, I kind of looking forward to that. It'll be uh, on September 24th next year will be kind of a, a turning point for me, a marker or something. Uh, um, it will mean I've been uh, saved 40 years, and I was previous lost 40 years. So that's coming up next year. <laughs> so yeah, I was lost a lot of years in my. In younger days, I, I uh, lived in Port Hood uh, basically all my life. Uh, done a lot of traveling when I was in my thirties, but that's where I was brought up, and uh, brought up in the. Uh, my my uh, dad was an alcoholic, and uh, it didn't take me long to become an alcoholic too. It just seemed like uh, it was natural for me to to drink it. Uh, and I started it fairly late for for uh, a lot of people. I was around 18 years old before I drank. It just seems to me when I had that first drink, it was uh, something, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but I, uh, something I needed in my life. Uh, something that would uh, enable me to, uh, uh, to deal with all the issues of life. So I drank basically until I was 40. And uh, I drank heavy, I drank every day. I, uh, I've been in and out of uh, places that uh, to help you uh, dry out. I've been in uh, Nova Scotia Hospital because of alcoholism. Uh, <coughs> I took antibiotics for a while. That's just a drug that'll make you horribly sick if you do drink. But there's only one thing about taking antibuse. You'll always find an use not to take that antibuse so you can take a drink, so you can have that drink. And that was the way I carried on until I was uh, 40 years old. But just previous to that, I, w I worked all my life, though. I, I worked at a lot of different jobs, but uh, I worked out in uh, Fort McMurray and uh, in Edmonton. <coughs> and, uh, Worked in the Carpenters Union. I uh, worked down 
in Calgary for a while, and it was about then I was at this time I was married and I had uh, one child. <coughs> so trying to drink every day uh, and trying to work every day, it's, uh, it's not easy. Uh, I got in a lot of trouble with the law, minor things, not, not major, drunk drive and that type of thing. And I, I'm, I still thank God that uh, nobody was ever hurt because of my dr drunk drive. <coughs> but at any rate, uh, when I was about 38 years old, I, I realized that uh, I'm not going to last too long. Uh, at this point, I, uh, I was separated from my wife and, and my child and uh, very depressed and uh, had suicidal thoughts. But one thing that uh, I wanted to look into before I uh, ended it was uh, whether God is real, whether, whether there is a hope for me. So I did get a Bible. And I started reading the Bible, and, uh, I, and, and I was brought up in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a church. I, I went to church uh, as a young fellow. I went, but as soon as I left home, I, I was finished with church. So I knew there was a God, and I believed there was a God, and I believed there was heaven and hell. And uh, when I got the Bible, I, I was reading the Bible, and I was telling God, it, this is all Greek to me. I don't understand a, a word you're, you're, you're saying in this. Uh, but still, I was looking to God. I never went to a church. Uh, I've never had anybody uh, testify to me about uh, how it is that you, you be saved. <coughs> so, I uh, continued drinking, and then... Uh, it was around 1983, uh, province of Alberta basically shut down because the oil industry went boom, uh, went bust. And uh, I went down to Boston, and there was a lot of work going on there. Uh, of course, I had no papers for work or anything else, but I had a buddy who was in the Carpenter Union, uh, used his ID, and uh, went to... Uh, work on construction in uh, downtown Boston. So I worked on that job for a while, and uh, uh, it was a high-rise building, uh, open steel framed building. <coughs> no, uh, many times I had the thoughts that how easy it would be to end it. Continued drinking and continue working for a while. Um, but I was getting desperate. I, I knew that I wasn't going to last too much longer. And I was crying out to God, is there, is there something for me? It, what can you do with somebody like me? I, I, I just found it hard to believe that God would even look to me and look at uh, how could he possibly uh, love me at any rate. It was well. I was down in Boston, and I have never told anybody this before. I never shared this part with, uh, with somebody. And uh, I believe that uh, when I was there, I had baptism of repentance. I had an uh, encounter with God, and uh, I confessed my sins. I knew I was a sinner, and I knew I deserved to go to hell. And it was about that time that things changed home. My wife and daughter wanted me back in their lives. Things seemed to change for me, so I did. I came home, and uh, I got a job with the county on the, on the garbage truck. So that's what I worked on for quite a number of years, actually, after that. So I knew I had an encounter with God, but yet I still didn't believe that uh, God could love me. How could he possibly love me? And it took God uh, about nine months to bring me to the realization that I needed, to, that I, that I uh, could receive him as my savior. I, uh, previous to, uh, just pre previous to being uh, saved, I, uh, 
I was going to Antikinish. My uh, sister had uh, a child <coughs> born in the hospital with her. And uh, I knew I had to go into a bookstore in Antikinish. It was a secular bookstore. And I could, the only reason I could figure going in there was God had some book for me in the religious section. Well, I went in today, and there was a little religious section there, and if you, a uh, department store or something like that, it was, uh, there wasn't much to pick from. At any rate, I asked God, if you, if you have a book for me, you're going to have to pick it up, because I have no idea. I went home with two books that night. Uh, I read till, I don't know, 2 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Uh, it was uh, books by Hal Lindsey, and one of his books was The Late Great Planet Earth. <coughs> but in there I seen where, what I had to do to be saved. The next morning I went to work, I uh, pulled over the side of the road at 6 o'clock in the morning on the 1984, September 1984, I'll never forget the date. Uh, hmm. Sorry. Um, yes, I'm not going any further, Lord. I know what I have to do. And then there I received Jesus Christ on the side of the road. And for that moment, I believed uh, when I was a lost man that, uh, the, the, uh, and I used to say this to the Lord, uh, there's probably a thousand religions out there, and I have no idea. And that's what I thought was all about was religion and uh, I said there's a thousand different religions out there and I have no idea which one you want me to go to but once I became saved religion was no longer the issue it was Jesus Christ he was the one that saved me and I had such assurance in my heart that there wasn't a religion on this earth could change my mind, but it was Jesus Christ and him only. I, uh, like I said, when I came up here, I didn't expect to spend so much time uh, on my testimony, uh, my past testimony. So what's God doing in my life now? Uh, well, when did the drinking stop, Tom? <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot that part. Thank you, Pierre. <laughs> yeah. When did the drinking stop? I lost all craving for alcohol the day I was born again. I have never craved a drink since that day. And there was one other thing that uh, my wife was expecting at the time and uh, she had quit smoking. And I had smoked from the time I was probably 16. Uh, once I was saved, I continued smoking. I, I wanted to quit because uh, my, my wife had quit smoking and uh, I, I just wanted to quit so that uh, she wouldn't be tempted. <coughs> One day I ran out of cigarettes and uh, realized that I had no more crave for cigarettes. I had lost all craving and I'm sure that happened the day I was born again. And there was one other thing that uh, God done for me immediately, and, uh, and my wife said to me about a week after I was saved, uh, you no longer curse. I didn't even realize that I had uh, that I cursed previous to that, but God took that from me too. At that point, I start going, no, I didn't go to a church for a number of years. I, uh, I didn't feel compelled to go to church, and it was, uh, I wasn't sure which church to go to. I, I knew I had God, I knew I had uh, Jesus, and uh, I would read his word, and uh, I would uh, go to a bookstore, a Christian bookstore, <laughs> and uh, tell the Lord, I have no idea what book to get here. And God gave me books that uh, I'm re still reading today, good books, Christian books. <clears throat> I went to a church uh, and decided on my own uh, to go to a church. And uh, I went there for about a year, but I wasn't happy there. And, and uh, one day at uh, 
kitchen table, I uh, crying out to the Lord, uh, Lord, uh, I don't believe you sent me to this church, and I'm just not happy here. Uh, you're going to have to point the way to wherever you want me to go. That very same day, I went to Port Hawkesbury, and I was in uh, Woolco. It's Walmart now, but yeah. It was Woolco at that time, and uh, who do I run into? Pierre Chesson. <laughs> <laughs> so he came home, him and, and, and Grace came home me that day, and uh, we spent the afternoon together, and uh, I started coming to, uh, he was going to Marguerite time. So I went there for quite a number of years, and uh, and when they started up the church here, I, I started coming here. And then when they started up a church in Inverness, I started there. And now I'm waiting for Port Hood. I'm waiting for a <laughs> church in Port Hood. It's coming. <laughs> uh, it's one little article. Have I, got, have I used up my time? <laughs> one little thing. Uh, what God is doing to my life, in my life now. I... Uh, I found that waiting on God, and it's, it comes from Pro, Proverbs 3, 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. Uh, seems to me I started off that way, and then I lost along the way. Uh, maybe it was because good teaching. Uh, I didn't look to the Lord uh, so much to bless his word and uh, the last number of years number four years uh, ago I uh, I realized that I needed to trust in the Lord to show me the truth of his word to, to bring out uh, the reality uh, I'm not having to not explain this very well but in first John it talks about being cleansed uh, the blood of Christ cleanses from all sin it's one thing to know that, to have a, uh, an understanding of that. But it's another thing to have God reveal that to you by His Spirit. Uh, it gives you such liberty to go to, to God in prayer. Uh, I know there's nothing between me and God. It has been dealt with. And uh, I found after that different revelation from God that... Uh, but one other thing I wanted to just briefly and uh, it's something I, I've uh, read about uh, a while ago and this happened in uh, Yellowstone National Park it was a forest fire a number of years there it went through it uh, it consumed about uh, 500,000 acres and they sent, uh, after the fire was out, they sent forest rangers in through that uh, park to survey the damage. One forest ranger was disturbed by what he was seeing. Maybe, it didn't say wh what the, uh, specifically had disturbed him. But he came upon this little bird that was uh, that actually gone through the fire. And this bird was completely carbonized. They, they said it's turned to charcoal, the heat. And he was just maybe disturbed because why would this little bird stay when it had the wings to fly away? Um, so maybe that disturbed him. It disturbed him, maybe that was disturbed him enough to, that he got a stick and he he rolled that little bird over. When he rolled that little bird over, three little chicks came fluttering out from underneath. Now we know the reason why. That bird had stayed there. God had given that bird the instinct. And it seemed just like a, a ray of light from, from heaven to, uh, to show the love that God has for us. You know? I was blessed when I, when I read that, read of that. So, I'll end with that. God is good. 
I just wish I had us received them when I was six years old. <laughs> it would have been 